So our next section is variation of parameters. So we made, we basically did the most trivial version of higher order differential equations we could, and then we looked back at them with Q of X having uh, some derivatives. We looked at if the derivatives are independent of the terms you normally get, what to do. Now we're going to look at what happens if Q of X has infinite derivatives that are linearly independent. And what in the world do we do in that case? So we're going to consider the easiest ODE that's not first order is second order. So we'll start with the second order ODE where Q of X has infinite um, linear independent derivatives. So just like before, we'll kind of start at the easiest case we can do, and then um, after that, try to generalize it a little bit. So we're going to consider second order <coughs> ODE, a linear ODE. non-homogeneous so that means Q of X is not zero with infinite linearly independent derivatives of Q of X So using what we did before, that's not going to work if you have infinite number of derivatives. <coughs> if we get crazy, if you had 30 linearly independent derivatives, and it would actually be impossible if you had infinite number to do the solution method that we tried before. So how do you solve an uh, infinite number of coefficients? You start out with a finite number of equations, one, basically, and you're not going to get infinite coefficients out of there. So let's go ahead and write out what this would be. Second order, so we don't have, it's not order n. So this will be, we can write it as a2y double prime, a1y prime plus a0y equals q of x. And of course, you want to make sure a2 is not 0, or else you would have a first degree or first order if your leading coefficient was 0. So remember the word linear does not correspond to Q of X. Q of X could be anything. In fact, a linear function would have two linearly independent terms in its derivatives. So what linear refers to are the coefficients in front of all the Y and Y primes. So that's what a linear ODE is. And So our first step is the same. So step one, find yc in the usual way. US, UAL, usual way. So yc will equal So you get two solutions, this order two, and we'll call the solutions y1 of x and y2 of x. Now generally, y1 of x will be of this form right here. We saw that already. You find your m values and just put constant in front. And same thing, y2 will look similar. Uh, but we're not going to use the fact that it looks like that. So this is just typically what your y1, of course, y2 could be the same. The trouble with writing this one out is if, if I write it like this, what assumption am I making? If I write that it's in this form, there's a certain assumption that I'm making about m. It's not repeated. It's not repeated. So what, what do I do if it's repeated? Yeah, 
Yeah, so or it's going to look like C, you've got to have a different constant, x, e, and might as well write m1x, because it will be the, if it's repeated, it'll be the same m value right there. So y2 could look two different ways. So because of that, we're just going to leave it as y1 of x plus y2 of x, so I don't have to do everything twice. <coughs> so we won't really use the fact that we know what the forms will look like. So what we're going to do, instead of our typical, uh, typical way to do this, is we're going to, instead of just put constants in front, so in those two spots, we're going to see what type of function can go in front of those two. So I'm going to put a generic function of x in front of these two. Instead of using constant coefficients, We're going to use a generic function of x. Well, in this case, two functions of x. So we're going to use functions of x. So instead of that, we'll go with yc equals, and we'll call our functions u1 of x and u2 of x. So again, the y1 and y2 are the usual ones that you get. And then this u1 and u2 are just arbitrary functions of x. So it's the u's that are our, these arbitrary functions of x. And this will actually be the particular, so we're going to get the particular solution. So let's label this yp instead. So what we're going to do is plug this back into the original. So we're going to take some derivatives and plug this back into the original. Now I don't want to keep writing of x of x of x everywhere. So let's just cut out the of x part. So we'll just write it u1, y1 plus u2, y2. So we know that they're functions of x, so we'll just write it like this. So if I want to plug it in, I need first derivative and I need second derivative. So we'll go ahead and compute yp prime and yp double prime. And you're going to need product rule. So any product rule questions? You should be getting four terms for your first derivative and eight terms for your next derivative. Before I plug in, is there any simplification we can do? Let's see. So those two can be combined together. 
make sure you don't combine a U1 and a U2 term together, even though the primes might match. All the y's are the, no, not all the y's are the same. And it's like that term repeats. So we got two of those terms. So we can turn into six terms total. All right, so now we're going to plug into the original. So go ahead and do that. So the original is right up here. So we'll label this asterisk, and we're going to plug into the original ODE. So I don't think I can zoom. Oh, there we go. I can zoom to fit the whole thing on the screen. <coughs> so hopefully that's right. So every term here should, I don't know if this is a real word, but have derivative degree two. So the total number of derivatives should be two for every term here. And then this should be deg derivative degree one, and this should be no derivatives or degree zero. That's one little way to check right here. Doesn't mean you have all the right terms, but at least you'd have two derivatives, one derivative, no derivatives. All right, so what in the world do you think we're going to do next? So we're going to probably turn the form around a little bit with algebra and try to match up some things. So this looks hideous right now. And let's see, some of these should be zero. Ah, so we're going to use algebra. We're going to do something kind of weird. We're going to solve for this right here. And we're going to use the fact that somewhere up here. All right, so these are homogeneous solutions right here. So what does that mean? That means they are the solutions not to this equation, but the solutions to being 0 on this side. So what does that mean algebraically? A2, so I'm looking at y1, a2, y1, double prime plus a1, y1 prime, 
plus a0, y1 equals 0. That's what it means to be a homogeneous solution. So if I plug y1 into the original, I better get 0. Now, this is not the general solution. This is the homogeneous solution right here. And same thing if I plug in y2. I should also get 0. That's what it means to be a homogeneous solution. And this shall be y2s. So any questions on that idea right there? That these homogeneous solutions, the property is you plug them in and you'll get 0. Not q of x, but you'll get 0. That's how we originally found these. We set it equal to 0 and solved the m values. All right. So what we're going to do is group up terms so I can group up these three terms together and cancel them out to 0. And we'll group up the other terms, if we can, as much as we can, and cancel that out to 0. So we're looking for these two patterns. So I'll stick with the green marker. And let's do the y1s first, as much y1 as we can. So what coefficient, a2, that was multiplied by the y1 double prime. So I want a2 times y1 double prime. So I see that right there. And what uh, for a1, I want y1 prime. So a1, I want y1 prime right there. And a0, I want regular y, regular y1. So there we go. Those three terms, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do two things at once. I'm going to expand. Let me just do it, and then hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I don't want to show all the intermediate steps. So I expanded and then grouped up those three terms. Hopefully I did it correctly. Is the last one just supposed to be y, a0, y, uh, a0, y1 prime on the bottom line that you Oh, that prime should definitely not be there, yeah. Yeah, so the zero term should have no zero derivatives, basically. <coughs> All right. What algebra can I do to these three terms? I'd say my favorite F word. Factor, we got u1, u1, u1. So factor that guy out. Now, the good news is this whole term is 0. So we grouped up the right three terms, and they will add up to 0. From the fact that it was the homogeneous solution right here. Yeah. So that's why that was the motivation for grouping these guys. And then it's going to be 0 times the u function, which will be 0. And we're going to play the same game, except I want you to play the game this time for the y2. So just underline terms one time that you're going to group together and do the same thing. And I'll get you started on the first term. So the first term, I need a2, y2 double prime. So a2, y2 double prime. So that's that last, I'll do a squiggle underline. That's the last term right there. So go ahead and pick out the correct y2 term in the next, and then the correct y2 term in the next one. Group them together.
Can I be lazy and just write it like this? All right, so all that stuff's going to add up to zero, or cancel out to zero. This is kind of like when you see sine squared plus cos squared, you cross it out and write one. Except now you're crossing it out and writing zero, because that's the identity you have right here. All right, so what do we really have? All this stuff's going to disappear. We have the terms that we didn't pick. So we got all leftover terms. So we're just going to rewrite all leftover terms now. Um, I'm going to go plus leftover terms, and then in the next row, I'll write the leftover terms where I actually have room. So we got plus remaining terms equals q of x. So we'll write everything that's not underlined. Good news is our third term is completely gone, because we used both of those two pieces already to cancel out. So we're not going to have that at all. So that's way less bad. It's starting to approach reasonableness. Now we're going to divide by a two. Actually, we'll regroup a little differently. I'm trying to think of why in my notes I've grouped this way. Ah. So I'll just write out the regrouping, and then we'll see why. <coughs> so this factoring is way harder to see. It's not really factoring is why. So let's look at what in the world's going on. So we got u1. Let's use the blue for, to account for things we've already seen. So we got a2, u1 prime, y1 prime. So we took one of those and one of those right, right there. So we took one of each of those and brought them out front. What is left is there's basically one of those left and one of those left. Now if you look at this right here, you can get this from the derivative that I wrote down here. So if you take this derivative, you have, uh, you'll have u1 double prime y1 plus u1 prime y1 prime plus, now on the second term here, you have u2 double prime y2 plus product rule u2 prime y2 prime, right there. So that's a really weird factoring. It's not one that I would have come up with arbitrarily. And it's not, the right word is not factoring. It's more of a calculus factoring, more so than algebra factoring. And then the last, we just copied the last guys down. So that's not anything terrific happening right there. 
So why in the world are we doing this? So apparently we have some nice properties here. So we need to make the second two terms zero for some reason. <coughs> so we're going to choose those two zero. So remember, we started with u1 and u2 just being functions. We didn't put any other conditions on them at all. We just said that there's going to be some function in front of these. And down here, the condition we're putting on is choose u1 and u2 so these two terms cancel out. And what that leads us with is basically the first term equals q of x. So if those two u's have the property that they cancel out when placed here, then your first term needs to equal q of x. So when we choose u1 and u2 to make these 0. What we're really doing is you need to satisfy this equation. Of course, if this function is 0 right here, if this is 0, what's the derivative? 0. So if that's 0 for all x values, its derivative will be 0 for all x values as well. So you really only need to make the first one 0, which will automatically make the second one 0. So if that first guy is 0, it's all you really have to do. So we'll put that in a box. That's the condition we need to satisfy specifically right there. And so we'll just write what's left, and we'll divide by a2. So we got u1, y, u1 prime y1 prime plus u2 prime y2 prime equals q of x over a2. That is our other condition that we need. So satisfy the conditions in the boxes right there. So there are two functions you need to find, and there's two conditions you have to satisfy. So you got two equations and two unknowns, basically. Now when you look at what properties we have, we're really solving for u1 prime and u2 prime, which will then integrate to get u1 and u2. And then you anti-differentiate. It should be a dx, and u2 will be integral u2 prime dx. So you just anti-differentiate. OK, so that was a lot of work to get to those two nice conditions at the very end. And this is section 22, yeah. OK, so 22 part B is called the Ronskian. The Ronskian. So the Ronskian of two functions is we use the letter W, 
and it's the determinant of this matrix, y1, y2, y1 prime, y2 prime. And this should not equal 0 when y1 and y2 are linearly independent functions. So when I write not equal to 0, this is going to be a function of x. So when we write a function is not 0, what we mean is it's not 0 for every x value. There could be 20 x values that make it 0, but it's not 0 for every x value. So not equal to 0 um, for at least some x values. Now, technically, you only need it to be not equal to 0 for one x value, but I can tell you right now, unless your function is not continuous, not being equal to 0 for one x value, there's going to be x values close to that that it's also not equal to 0 for. So unless your function is horrible and not continuous, you're not going to have one isolated not 0, and your function is 0 everywhere else. That doesn't happen for functions that we look at. So that's why, technically, I could have written 1, but it'll be some x values, not just 1. All right, so that's w, and then u1 prime, same u1 we were talking about before, is the determinant of q of x over a2, y2, y2 prime, 0, divided by that w determinant. And u2 prime is similar. What does this look like from linear algebra? Whose rule? Character on Seinfeld. Kramer's rule. So that is Kramer's rule right there. Not named after Kramer on Seinfeld, I don't think. Probably not. <laughs> Where's Newman's rule? OK. So if you actually compute these determinants, we'll just do the first one, and you will see really quickly. So w is. Determinants are really quick. You just go down the diagonal, multiply, go up the other diagonal, multiply, and subtract the two. So that's a determinant. So this is a, oh, I didn't let me undo. Good. Uh, this be y1, y2 prime minus y1 prime, y2. And hopefully that was something we saw up here. Uh-oh. I'm worried about the minus signs. That equal to zero is supposed to match that one up there. Oh, no, it's not. What am I thinking? Those are u's and y's. Of course it's not. Yeah. Never mind. No. What's that? No. <laughs> doesn't work like that. Yeah, there's no interpretation of <laughs> your letter looks sort of like this. I think they call it English or art. I think you mean this. 
All right. So let's go ahead. Uh, so what happens if we have degree three, four, five, six, seven? Uh, this is Kramer's rule, and Kramer's rule works for more than just two uh, coefficients. So if you look at this pattern right here, back when we used Kramer's rule, I called this, we'll call this W1, where W1 is the first column of W replaced with what I just circled. And this one right here, this will be W2, where W2 is W, except you replace column 2 with the column that I circled. So if I had a third one, we'd replace the third <coughs> column with this column right here. Now, of course, what fills in the rest of the column? So let's write out the linear system we would be solving. So degree three or more, we'll just say it's degree n. And what do we get? We get u1 prime y1. I'm going to write to the zero power, or not the zero power, the zero derivative, just so the pattern is super obvious when we go across. Plus u2 prime y to zero derivative So one thing I'm not going to do is do everything we just did in degree 3 to see if the pattern works. You can if you want to, but if you thought degree 2 was bad, degree 3 is going to be, well, first of all, degree 3, you start out with three homogeneous solutions. So there's a y3. And then you also need to compute the third derivative, wherever we are. The derivatives get successfully, successively uglier because you get extra product rule happening. So the third derivative, first of all, you'll start out with three terms, not two, and you'll have to take an extra derivative. So we're not going to do that. It's, it can definitely be done, but it takes, uh, it takes quite a bit of time. So let's just, how about just because I said so? Does that work for, the, for this? All right, I think we did degree two all the way, so that, that should be enough. You could do degree 3 in the exact same pattern that we did degree 2. So this one should be 0. The reason I'm saying this is because I'm not going to tell you, we're not going to go through all the details of why all these should be 0. And then the one at the bottom will be that q of x over 8. It'll be an now because it will be the leading coefficient. So next up, u1 Prime. Well, I think we can see the pattern going downwards. So what's changing? Basically, your y's get their derivatives increased by 1 every time you go down. So I think that's enough to go dot, 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 <coughs> dot. We'll go to the n minus first, because the last one's going <coughs> to change. So our second to last one, now I'm using the bracket no parentheses notation, because I don't know how many tick marks n minus 1 would be. That would be u2 prime. Oh, messed up on our subscripts here. This should be u2 prime. And this will be u2 n minus first derivative plus u n prime y n n minus first derivative equals 0. And last up, this is our one that doesn't follow the pattern. Uh-oh. Oh, there should be n total. There should be n terms total here. So we're going to have a little problem. How many terms have I written down so far? 
It looks like n minus 1. How many rows have I written down? I mean, I've written 3, but compared to n, obviously, there's things I didn't write. So how do we count this? I stopped at n minus 1, but where did I start? 0. So if you have n minus 1 things, but you start counting at 0, you actually have n. So it's a little tricky. So you've probably seen kids try to cheat like this. They say they have six fingers, and uh, or no, four fingers. They go zero, one, two, three, four. So I have four fingers. But we normally count one through five, not zero through four. But zero through four counts the same number of fingers. So here we're starting at zero, going to n minus one. So we have n things written down. Uh, we only have n derivatives, so I messed up on our this should be an n minus 2 right here, or else I've gone too far. So this should be an n minus 2, minus 2, minus 2. So our very last row will have the n minus 1s in it. So I should have n rows total. So my last row is going to have n minus 1s. And this is different. This is the q of x function. Before it was divided by a2, but that 2 stood for the highest coefficient, or the leading coefficient. So in this case, it's going to be a n. Now we have n. We should have n rows now. So start at 0, stop at n minus 1. So we got n total. So let's write out the w function, uh, the w determinant. So that is our W. And then we have Kramer's rule, UK. So this will be the kth coefficient function, or UK prime is WK over W, where WK is W with column k replaced with a whole bunch of oh, it's q of x over a n followed by zeros. So that will go in for the kth column. All right, so there we go. So you probably want to do some problems to practice. So it only took forever, so we'll have to do our problems tomorrow.